Right, hello and welcome back to another video. Today we've been carrying on with our Blueprint series and looking at Blueprint communication. Um, so there's different ways Blueprints can, can sort of talk to, can trigger events and pass data to other Blueprints. Uh, and we're gonna be looking at the three main ways we can do that. So firstly, that is just direct communication, uh, which is getting a reference to the other Blueprint directly. Uh, secondly, we can have a look at event dispatches, uh, which is kind of like a one big event that triggers of lots of little things. There's another use case for that as well, which we'll get to uh, later. Uh, and then finally, there is uh, Blueprint Interfaces, which is kind of where you have lots of Blueprints that want to implement um, slightly different logic, but all kind of triggering off the same thing. So um, taking damage, something like that. The actor might respond differently, but they all want to sort of take damage in the same way. So start with, we're going to uh, look at direct communication. Um, and we're going to need something to communicate to. So I'm going to create a quick uh, Blueprint. Uh, and I'm going to call this um, direct from target light. So this is just going to be a simple test blueprint that we'll be able to uh, communicate to. And what I'm going to do is add a point light component. And then we're going to create uh, a function here, uh, own print functions, uh, that's going to um, toggle the light. I'm actually going to call this function uh, underscore toggle light. Uh, and this is going to just do exactly that, toggle the uh, visibility of our light component. Um, so if it's on, it'll turn off and vice versa. Uh, now we can use a function, that works fine. Uh, we can also use a custom event. I'm just going to call this custom uh, toggle light. And this is going to do the same thing. Um, we can just reference that here. So just to show you that both are the same, uh, they're comparable, up to you whether you want to use functions or custom events. There is a little bit of difference in functionality, um, but they're both going to work exactly the same for our use case. So now we have a light that we can talk to. We need a blueprint that's going to actually do the talking or, or thing that's going to do the communicating. So another actor blueprint, uh, and I'm going to call this direct communication. So the way we do this now, uh, inside this blueprint, um, we can create a variable. And that variable is actually going to be of the type um, of the blueprint we just created. So um, called it target light, something like that. And then just make sure I get my blueprint naming correctly. It's BP direct communication target light. Direct on target light. So it's a reference to this type of blueprint. Uh, now, if we compile this, we can't set the defaults for this because we're looking for an actor from the world and this blueprint isn't in the world yet. Um, but what we can do is make it instance editable. And now if I go in here and create a copy of this in the world as well. Oh, that's the wrong one. Copy of this in the world as well. So this blueprint now wants to talk to this one and we can do that via the drop down or via the um, eyedropper. So this blueprint here now has a direct reference to this one. And with that reference, I can go into my event graph and I'm just going to do a quick delay to let the, the game load. And then I'm going to take that reference and I can call either that function to have a light or that custom event just to show that they're the same. Uh, I did it custom, didn't I? Custom toggle light. So either one of those functions or uh, custom events we can toggle and set through. Really nice, um, easy way for one blueprint to communicate with another. And we've turned our light off. Now this is great, um, but we might want to have multiple lights that want to be communicated with at the same time. Uh, in which case, um, I might just delete this and make a duplicate. Uh, and I'm going to call this one direct communication array. And here, rather than just having a reference to a single blueprint, if I delete that, uh, I can make my target light blueprint reference uh, into an array. And I'll be able to add multiple references to that, uh, to, those, to those lights. Um, so if I make some space, so now I'm going to have an array of different lights. And then when I want to trigger this off, uh, I'm going to trigger off a for each loop and it's going to run through each of these uh, and then trigger off this function 
uh, or the custom event, whichever you prefer. So if I bring the reference to this in here, now I can go in and I can add four references. And you can see this is going to work. If I click play now, it's going to pick up those four, which is pretty cool. Uh, what I might do uh, is just have a slightly longer delay in this one. And then I can keep the original single reference in here as well. And what I should see is one light goes off and then half a second later they all swap. And they do. So you know, they're sort of overlapping now. This is good. This works. Uh, it's a little bit time consuming if you have a lot of, um, of references. Um, if I had 100 lights, I'm going to go in and set those manually. It's going to take a long time. And also, we might be dynamically spawning these. These could be enemies or some kind of gameplay element. So we need some way of dynamically getting these things. And we can do that. So again, I'm just going to create another duplicate. Pick the communication. And I call this one get all. So uh, let's just delete these for now. Uh, and then do it as a two second delay. So there's a blueprint command here called get all actors. And we can do it off class, and that's going to be by the, the blueprint type we've created, and that's what we're going to use now. Uh, you can also do it with tags. So it's possible to go into any actor in the world uh, and add a tag. Uh, and these can be anything you like. I could call this, say, level one. We can get all the actors that relate to level one, and it will get them regardless of what type they are, just using this tag. Uh, which can be really useful. I go back in here and do my get all actors again. Uh, all actors with interface, and we'll be covering blueprint interfaces um, later on uh, in this lesson, um, or of class with tag. So you can combine these two together. So uh, depending on what you need, or oh, matching tag query, not sure the difference between those, but there we are. Um, so get all actors of class, that's what we're going to do here. And we're going to tell it to get all actors of the direct communication target light because that's the uh, blueprint that we're sort of communicating to now in this case we don't need um, this reference well we might leave it there for now we might use it in a second um, but we can do the same thing so now this is going to run through every actor in the world find the ones that are of the type we've selected and then it's just going to do again a for each loop and we'll do a toggle light and I'll do the function what we should see now is a two second delay. So at one second toggle, at least needs to be in the world. Um, one second toggle, one and a half seconds, everything toggles again. And in this case, I'm just gonna create a couple more lights to show that the get all will get all the lights. So one goes, they go, and that goes. Um, obviously this is a bit of a uh, sort of trivial test, toggling all these lights on and off, but hopefully it shows the um, sort of the functionality and process of how we do these things so um, cool so this is the get all actors of class now um, if we look at the tooltip uh, you'll see it says here this is a slow operation used with caution um, in this case we're not creating or destroying our, our lights dynamically um, so we could take this command uh, and just do it once and save the result so this target like array um, even though I've turned off the uh, instance editable, I could, for example, go into my construction script, uh, take that get all actors of class, if I just cut that out there, paste it back, I could do this and then set those as a, as a target light reference uh, and then just use that here in my, uh, in my loop. So now it's the same functionality, but I've just offset that cost to the construction script, so it's only ever going to run once, um, which is fine as long as my blueprints aren't being created or destroyed dynamically at runtime. So, um, up to you. Might be that you want to do that as a one time setup on begin play rather than construction script. This should work. If I just compile and test this, so I'm looking for these two lights to toggle, and they do. Um, but sometimes you have a blueprint that does lots of spawning, and then the construction scripts need to be in the right order. And so sometimes by doing that on begin play, um, it's just a bit more robust and it will be like a, a one time quick setup and then you never have to call it again. But obviously that only works if, you're, um, if your blueprints aren't being created and destroyed, because if so, you'll have to update your kind of array. Cool. Uh, one more 
little trick we can do with um, with blueprints and direct communications and, and really with sort of the get all and that is casting. So um, currently these are all of the type blueprint direct communication target light. Well, when we create a new blueprint, everything we've created so far has been of the uh, inherited from the actor class. But we can also find your direct communication target light, select that blueprint as our as our parent. So we can do here blueprint direct communication target light. If I create that as my parent, and I'm actually going to name it something very similar, direct um, target light underscore red. And I'm going to make a version of this that inherits from the parent, um, but also is going to go in and actually just set the color of our light. Um, so color, and I'm going to set the new light color to be red. There we are. Now, this should be exactly the same as the other light. As you can see here, it's going to go through and run the parent construction script. It's going to run all the parent sort of um, logic in here. Um, should have picked up the parent function. Um, let's just double check that it has. So this should have the parent function in here. Not sure why that's not visible. Uh, it might be a aha. Here we are. Need to turn on show inherited values, and now I should be able to see the inheritance. Parent class direct communication target lights. Yeah. So it is set up correctly. I was expecting to see the event graph, parent event graph in here. Um, either way, it should still work for what we're doing. Um, so now we have our, our red lights here. Now this is our get all. Uh, let's just make a new get all, shall we? Um, duplicate this. Direct communication get all cast. Let's make this a little bit. My name is getting a bit long. Um, so we're going to make another copy of our another instance of our couple of controlling blueprints. Get all cast. And in this case, what I want to do, well, I'm going to do this get all, but I'm only going to save the reference if it's of the type um, of the red one, basically. Um, so this blueprint direct communication, this get all, it's going to get all of the actors that are this type and all the children of that type. So um, so our, our red version is also going to be got. So we're going to get all seven of these lights, but I, I want to kind of filter them through. Uh, and we can do that with a casting. So here, for each loop, I'm going to go through each one of these, uh, and I'm going to do a cast to. Uh, and what this is doing is saying, like, this is what we think we have. This is what we're looking for. Uh, and it's just kind of like, a, is that thing, our object, is this thing what we think it is? And then if it is, we're going to use this pin. If not, we can use this pin. Uh, and we can also kind of like trigger off um, functions within that. So all we're going to do here is go through, if it is of that type, we're going to add it to our target light array. And we're going to add this reference. So look, looking at the logic here, we're going to get all the actors of the type um, sort of light direction, uh, sorry, direct communication light. This is what we've been working with. Uh, and then for each of them, we're going to check, is it of the type red? Is it of that specific child type? And if so, add it to this reference. And now if I just go in and add a bit more of a delay, our final kind of part here after two and a half seconds is the red light should turn back on again. So toggle, 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 and it does. Um, why is this useful? So if you're making a, a game with a lot of enemies, um, you might want sometimes to get all the enemies and then sometimes to just kind of like access a subset of them uh, and so by casting directly to them uh, you can kind of have your code do do both things kind of at once which um, is really nice it's really powerful um, so that is all the direct communication uh, methods for for now uh, might leave this here and actually do the other two as separate videos so um, all three obviously are going to be very similar communications, but um, but for now I think we'll leave it there. So um, as always, if you have any questions or comments or anything uh, that you'd like to, to ask me, let me know. Um, 
big thanks to all my patrons for supporting the channel and letting me do this uh, and uh, I hope that was helpful uh, and I'll see you all next time.